Oh, politics now, and the Lib Dem leader, Sir Vince Cable, says that now is not the time for an election within his party, and he will be staying in his job for crucial Brexit developments, saying that Britain is in its gravest times. When democracy can't deliver, the frustration opens up a space for various forms of ugly populism. And we've seen this summer, uh, it's offered as verbal attacks on Muslims and Jews, and wall-to-wall -wall Brexit, and that's it. And uh, it's, I think it's, it's a worrying picture. And as the leader of the Liberal Democrats, I've naturally asked myself how I and my party can protect and develop uh, liberal democracy in Britain at a time when it's in grave danger. And I'm tempted to say the gravest since the 1930s. So, as the Lib Dem leader tells his party, he hasn't seen politics this ugly since the 1930s. It seems like there's been yet another nail in Theresa May's coffin. This time, Conservative MP Nadine Doris has come out in support of Boris Johnson if he was uh, to run for the top job. Well, joining me from Westminster to discuss this further is the former Lib Dem advisor, Sean Kemp, and also Michael Walker, contributing writer at uh, Novara Media. Welcome to you, both of you gentlemen. Um, Sean, if I can start with you. We were listening to some of the words of the Lib Dem leader there, Sir Vince Cable, talking about wanting to rebrand uh, the party to be really a, a home for moderates. I'm just wondering whether, uh, A, it's too late, and even if it's not too late, is Sir Vince Cable, who's really been associated with the party forever and a day, the man to lead that rebrand for the Lib Dems? Well, I think what Vince is saying is rather than lead the rebrand, he's, he's leading the, the restructuring that he sees as being important to set that in place. I don't think it's too late, but I think it's important to say this kind of thing is going to take a long time. I think it's very you're not going to see in sort of six months' time all of a sudden some sort of resurgence in sort of Liberal Democrat membership, I think, based on this. I think what Vince is saying is let's get these structural changes in place. We think there's a bunch of people out there who are very frustrated with the way politics is at the moment, and then let's start to really try and appeal and reach out to them. That's, to be frank, going to be quite a long-term project, but I, I don't think it's a sort of going to be a wasted one. Would it be fair to say that the Lib Dems haven't really recovered uh, since people felt that they were effectively sold down the river by Nick Clegg when he went into coalition with the Conservatives? Yeah, you, you cannot deny for a second that the, the big disastrous moment, if you like, for the Lib Dems, and I say to so someone who's with the Lib Dems and supporters going to coalition, is once we went into coalition, we lost a big chunk of voters and we've never been able to get them back. Um, and I think Vince probably realises that as a minister in the coalition as well, if you're going to now try and reach out and try and get people to either forget that or to understand that or see it in context or whatever, it probably will need a fresh face at some point. I think Vince realises that. He stepped in as leader when a leader was needed in the short term after Tim Farron stepped down. He's now going to try and see through these changes he thinks are important, see through the end of the Brexit process. And then I think probably we look to how do we build much more for the long term. But you can't deny the coalition has been a huge factor in the, the Lib Dems' decline in fortunes. Let's bring Michael in here and let's just widen it out a little bit, Michael, um, beyond the Lib Dems, to, to talk about the fact that a lot of people with moderate politics, the, the electorate I'm talking about, um, don't feel they have a home to go to now. Uh, well, I'm not sure we've seen that much evidence of that, in fact, I'd say, where we're seeing the clamour for a kind of centrist politics is from Britain's elites, not really from Britain's public. Uh, that's why you're seeing many people who are previously very important politicians but no longer really have much of a following constantly appearing uh, on Radio 4, constantly appearing on all the news channels. Um, but there isn't really a clamour from that from below. I think one problem... Uh, people talking about either a new centrist party or revamping the Lib Dems have, is they haven't really specified what they do stand for. They say they're moderate, but what does that mean? Everyone thinks they're moderate. The Labour Party would say that it's moderate to go back to tax and spend policies and to raise minimum wages and to renationalise the railways. That wouldn't have been called moderate by Tony Blair, but to many people in the public, that's exactly what it is. Uh, what are your views on Tony Blair's comments this morning about uh, the Labour Party? Uh, if I'm honest, I welcome them uh, because I don't really want to see a centrist party start. I don't think that is exactly what Britain needs. And I think Tony Blair, when he re-enters British politics, all that really does is delegitimise the causes that he ties his name to. Uh, this is someone who only this week we found out has taken millions from the Saudis uh, for consultancy and has met with the far-right leaders of Italy. 
Um, I think Tony Blair represents a politics that, of course, was popular about 20 years ago, but now has very little of a constituency. And I think this will be seen for what it is, an attempt at an establishment stitch up um, that no one really is demanding. Uh, Sean, what are your views um, about Boris as a potential leader of the Conservative Party? Do you think he's going to launch a leadership bid? Well, I, I, I don't know, but will he? He has been for the last 10 years. I don't see why he'd stop now. Um, he clearly wants to be leader of the Conservative Party, and I think that sums up actually what Vince was talking about today. If you look at Brexit, the biggest issue facing this country, you have this weird psychodrama in the Conservative Party, you have an equally weird psychodrama in the Labour Party, and we have no solution to it that will ever command a parliamentary majority. So we're completely stymied on this massive issue. So I think Boris deciding, you know, to, to ramp up his PR exercise over the last couple of days has actually helped to demonstrate what Vin, the point that Vince was making, was that I do think there is a group of people out there who look at the way politics is working at the moment and aren't sure it is really working. And I think that's what Vince is looking to tap into, is the people who see politics as not being able to answer some of these big fundamental long-term issues. Michael? Uh, I think it's all very well to talk about big fundamental issues, but I disagree um, with Sean in that I think there are some similarities between Vince Cable and Boris Johnson in that neither have given any indication that they actually know what they want, what their vision for Britain is. So Boris Johnson, I mean, he's obviously just the big ego show. Uh, we've been seeing this sort of ongoing... Um, sort of shadow leadership campaign without any demonstration of what he'd actually planned for Brexit or what he'd planned for Britain. And now we've seen Vince Cable coming out and saying what he wants is a moderate momentum without really mentioning any policy programme or any answers to the big questions that currently exist in Britain. Who do you think uh, will be the Prime Minister after Brexit? Um, well, I've, well, after Brexit, if Theresa May falls... Yeah. Uh, that, well, that potentially could be Boris Johnson. I mean, it's going to come down to who the, who the Tory MPs want to lead their party and then who the base votes for. So I'd be worried if it was Boris Johnson. He's already had one of the major offices of state, the Foreign Office, and did a pretty bad job of it. Um, so I don't think Boris leading the Tory party and leading the country will be good for the Tories or Britain. What do, you think about that? what do you think about that, Sean? Do you think he would have support from his own MPs? Because we were hearing from Nigel Evans earlier that if he can get into that final two, he stands a very good chance. But getting to that final two is another matter because he probably doesn't have the support from his MPs. I think Tory party members are, are, are very fond of him and probably would vote for him to be leader. I think everything I've heard from Tory MPs and about what Tory MPs think of the way Boris Johnson's been behaving has been that they would, frankly, rather not have him as leader. But if he makes it in... It, it's strange here. Can, uh, can we think of any other examples here? Someone who the MPs don't necessarily like, who makes it in and the membership loves, can very easily then just go on and become leader. And then, and then I think it's... I would agree entirely with the comments about what Boris Johnson would be like as leader of the Conservative Party. I think there's a void in terms of what he actually wants to do, rather than be the centre of attention. I'll just uh, move you on quickly to Chequers. Michel Barnier saying uh, that Chequers' proposals are effectively dead. W where do we go from here, do you think? How is that going to play out, Michael? Um, well, I think when the Chequers deal first was announced, it didn't look like it really had many legs on it. What we saw in Chequers was an agreement that wasn't really designed as a compromise between Britain and the EU, but was massively cobbled together basically to plaster over cracks in Theresa May's cabinet. I think at this point it's time for the government to grow up and come out with a deal which isn't just to please their base. Well, I mean, Chequers didn't please their base anyway, but isn't just to please their cabinet, but which actually looks like it has a chance of being accepted and which they can argue for as a reasonable position which the Europeans would be unreasonable to reject, which is not the case right now. Just final word from you very briefly, Sean. I mean, I, I think actually, I mean, the problem with Brexit, I think, is I just find it impossible to see any kind of agreement that's going to make it through Parliament. I just can't see how in any, any agreement finds a majority at the moment. Well, we'll see, won't we? Haven't got long to wait. All right. Uh, thank you very much, both of you, uh, Michael Walker and Sean Campbell.